figures which are favorable to a whole lot of people and these figures they are being cited to you so ultimately to justify the disfavor that is somebody said about favors the things which you were supposed to receive you are not receiving right that's the first point that i want to make the second point how do i extend this framework have you got what i'm trying to say yes, this yes, basic yes. dichotomy that is there in this institution yes, okay yes. this sense of ownership that's why it becomes very easy for them to wash you off their hands to wash you off their minds because they can easily say that in their minds they can easily say you are incidental you don't matter to me now i'm slightly worried about that are they therefore saying that ultimately this institute will matter to people who can pay are they basically saying that we are heading towards some sort of a de facto quiet you know under the carpet sort of privatization that's i'm putting it as a question for you okay now the second point that i want to make as an extension of this argument is how would this institute for instance <coughs> sell itself as a unique institution as different from and superior to other universities that's what you are being told all the time how would it be able to sell i'm posing this question for you if this is the dichotomy at its very heart you need to understand the smooth operation with which this institute constitutes itself now so far the institute has said that we are unique and different and special and better because we work for the poor and the marginalized earlier the word marginalization had another connotation because of the obc movement scst movement durban us senate uh, you know dalit tribal intellectuals coming up a lot of publication now they have been compelled to include the shadow caste and shadow tribes under the category of dalit and they are compelled to include them as part of the marginalized otherwise they were always working with the dalits as a political category but they were considered basically as sc and st a sort of a helpless infants requiring some baby milk you know that's how uh, they were treating you know this community all over uh, uh, when they were establishing this institute or when they used to run this institute now the vision and the mission very clearly states that we are an institute is special because we work for these guys any university which teaches an ma in sociology or a ba in politics or something or even a btech or something like a bs in biochemistry these universities and institutions never really make the poor and marginalized as the essence of the work but we do that's the claim of tata institute of social sciences that it does so my question is that if it does so okay what is going to be its vision and mission when in the on this very soil of this institution it practices completely the opposite of what it claims itself to be so it cites government regulations it cites some shortage of funds it cites favors that they have given to you in order to show that they cannot actually practice that very social justice what they were talking about when does social justice get practiced when does social justice get practiced when is it an issue is it an issue when all of you are very comfortable is it an issue in a society which is very egalitarian is it an issue when there is no tension there is no contradiction not at all social justice becomes an issue primarily when there is contestation when there is a challenge when there is a problem when it is political social justice becomes an issue when the whole problem is problematized is thematized as political right so therefore if this institution is going to talk about social justice and it's going to sort of disenfranchise the very constituency about which they are talking about externally all the time and selling itself as an ex in unique institution you know i am demanding i am demanding that if this is what the institute wants to do it better change its vision and mission it should very clearly state that it has nothing to do with the poor and the marginalized okay 
we are basically a for-profit organization we have nothing to do with the poor and marginalized and we'll be either like any other enlightenment oriented university or we'll do some business but we will not do anything for the poor and the marginalized if you are going to do for the poor and the marginalized then you be with the poor and marginalized first here and then you go and lecture outside do it here and then go and lecture and don't give any and don't give any bull crap and lies and don't behave like big autocrats with students students are students after all you are responsible for teaching them for upbringing them i'm not going to open my mouth about what crap gets taught here about what sort of things happen here that that is that is my hassle that is my hassle i will do that in my own my own way but you just do your job well here in this in this premise okay you do it in hyderabad you do it in tulsapur you do it in gohati just do your job well so i am very happy that your vision and mission says that you are going to do it you know for uh, on the be be behalf of the poor and the marginalized most welcome let's do that i am very happy to be with you but then if you are going to be happy to be with you then you must show that you are actually practicing it on this campus you see so therefore the demand from our side should be that first and foremost you either change the vision and mission or you better listen to what we are trying to say because we here are speaking within the framework of the vision and mission so this becomes even more strong because we have two sets of facts with you dichotomous to each other one is your fact about shortage of money coming from the central government which might well be true but on the other hand your expansion you have a lot of money in your pockets you have been claiming all the time we have been receiving mails as faculty members from this person who has just left that your salary is not sure for one year he has been threatening us that every month i am begging and borrowing and your salary is basically not sure who cares i never heard a circular coming from the ugc saying that this salary of faculty members who are there on ugc post have been changed at all nothing like that has ever come we checked all over the country nothing like that has been issued but this is what we have been basically told so irrespective of what they say i assure you that this institute has got enough money to basically expand to continuously demand new and new centers and get them done to appoint people and if this is i am not interested in whether the erstwhile director was gassing and the registrar was basically putting him on proper financial tracks that's not my headache man you sort that out i am only interested in the claim that you are making if you are making the claim that you are expanding if you are saying that new projects are being undertaken if i see that you are appointing the people with the same designation with differential salary if i see that you are spending a lot of money throwing them all over the place then i want to know that how within the same institution you are quoting a shortage of funds from the central government to deny these students their due that's what i want to know okay so so if you are saying if you are saying that you are in a total deficit then don't fight in the academic council to pass a new center in kerala don't do that okay if you are saying that there is a shortage of funding here that you can't pay students then i say close down all the expansion until such a time when you can pay all students these students here or in hyderabad or tulsapur or guwahati are more important you are the justification of why i not only i get my salary okay i i like reading books therefore i get my salary but all those characters here who don't read books they also get the salary because of you so if i am getting my salary because of you then my primary concern is you okay so i will do everything whether i expand whether i shut down my pockets whatever i do i'll keep that i'll have to keep primarily first and foremost only you in mind the ugc regulation is very clear uh, an mphil phd student should basically have a single room i remember when we were in jnu 
in the first year very apologetically the university told us to share a room second year onwards for six seven years we all had a single room and here i saw bunk beds little did i know that in bombay you put students on bunk beds i mean uh, i mean you can stay comfortably in your place and you're letting students change clothes in bunk beds you know you're cl talking about social justice poverty marginalization and all that and you're treating your own constituency here okay now what therefore the question that needs to be put to this institute very briefly is this very clearly you have two sets of accounts now we are not accounting wizards in fact we don't want to be accounting wizards why should we that's not a business but your job is to basically manage the accounts in such a way that you are consistent and you have integrity and integrity here in this university in this institution requires integrity primarily for these students right now many a times i've heard that students don't read or they are loafing around or they do this or do that and all that that's part of growing up you will have to convince the students as to why they should devote more and more time for the reading but that can't be done by cutting the pockets of students by putting them in very difficult you know living conditions that's not the way as far as i know the singular most important institution besides your hostels for you the library has been suffering drastically from fund cuts right now you cite the government as being responsible for cutting grants for the library on the other hand you don't have any problem in setting up a center in kerala or in delhi we don't even know where the hell is this center in delhi located i mean a lot of us colleagues and most of you as students don't know so what is this business of expanding on one side it requires money doesn't it of having money for this expansion and on the other side basically cutting down money now the presentation that was made by the registrar to all faculty shows an overall deficit because all this has been basically going on if all this has been basically going on then there are there is one very clear thing that you need to be clear about first and foremost whatever you need to do please realize that the student is the main constituency okay so whatever you do their interest and their welfare in this campus and in all the other campuses has to be first of all protected is this not common sense this is the most commonsensical thing that i can think of what other business does the registrar have here what other business does he have here what other business as i as a teacher have here other than the fact that okay taking care making you grow up and also reading and writing something new at least i have that caveat i can run away and say look don't disturb me i'm writing this nobel prize winning paper i can tell you that but what business does the administration have other than taking care of you tell me are they writing papers nothing like that so therefore it's very important to realize this basic dichotomy that this institute has played its game by now there is a lot of color that it gives to all this it sort of plays by populism it says that no you know you are coming and critiquing us about projects and expansion do you know what we do we go and work for those dalits and those muslims in govandi you know that's what we do do you know what we are doing we are running off to narmada and we are saving all those tribals from drowning themselves that's a senti card that they are used you do that there's no harm in doing that provided you don't cut and filch from me provided you first of all commit yourself properly to me because that's where you are located after that you go and do this as a part of this as a part of the student training process do whatever is possible but don't do it at the cost of basically completely marginalizing the legitimate interests and claims of the students so this is the game that this institute has constantly played all the time it has always played by this two sectors the public sector and the private sector okay it has always done that whenever it wanted to use it has used basically the custodians under the custody of the state and they can wash their hands of you because the state is not paying you very clearly it means that you within this institute do not belong this institute is not yours this institute is for those people 
who basically are under the institute's custodial care okay otherwise if this were not the case they could not have washed their hands of you as far as i can see the way it is going ahead they are washing their hands of you laying the blame at the doorstep of the government and not taking any ownership okay of your problems so please understand i teach you a lot about mobilization social movements crying for the adivasis and tribals and dalits and all that how shouting myself hoarse that we are a different institution about social justice but this institute which speaks about social justice is viciously is viciously against social justice and human rights i repeat it again this institute is viciously against social justice and human rights and the success of your agitation so far has to be able to point this one constituency that even till today even the modi government which likes to call all of us as naxalites even they will have to admit that the last and final constituency okay of everything is the student body because i get my salary as a faculty member i can play any games what do you get you are here for learning you just get a scrap of paper called a degree so therefore you are ever bored okay so so the so the important thing to notice here is that this agitation has made it very clear to everybody that the institute does not own you the institute has left you at the mercy of the state if this institute which claims itself as public funded leaves you at the mercy of the state then this institute is anti national this institute is anti national because if you are within the republic of india then you are within the republic of india the private sector does not operate outside the republic of india the agreement the contract between the people and the state is that there the state will allow the private sector to go it's entirely at the mercy of the state the supreme authority is the state because i have transferred my will of freedom to the state it rules and governs on my behalf it's the will of the people the legislature the parliament is the will of all of us together you can't tell us effectively that you are part of the state and therefore outside the institute somebody else who is not part of the state is inside the institute you can't do that period that's it so therefore i really congratulate you because this is something which many of us from the faculty in our own capacities we have been saying they have not been doing it you know we have not been able to be successful in persuading the institute to actually face up to what it's doing but at the same time your movement has been very successful in basically pointing out this contradictions and being able to raise this basic question so i was hearing because you all are all very emotional you have spent a lot of time at this most crucial part of your career you are going to graduate some of you are going to give your final examinations and you are coming and staying here spending so much time with no hope no communication from that building right so therefore at this particular stage the very fact i wanted to share with you that effectively what you have done is you have pointed out the major farcial hypocritical anti national face of this institute and i congratulate you so i would i would therefore as a as a last instance i would request you in the same breath that i'm requesting this institute because it's not the case as if i'm just going to walk away after you know approximately 30 years of service and just be another employee i own the institute as anybody else does okay every faculty member every member every staff member all my friends in the security all of them are part and parcel of this institute not the registrar or only the director okay so if therefore all of us are part of this institute all of us are basically good human beings we are all agreed upon the fact that all of you have come to study and you are under our care 
therefore it is our responsibility and our job to play the game very well above the board and in a clean manner so my request to you and specifically to the institute is to sort this problem out at the earliest in a way which will show that the institute basically is an integral part of the republic of india and that all of us are basically under the custodial care of the state we are the state the institute is also the state and therefore we all need to be owned up the institute has to own up each and every one of you once i own yourself up i can then start discussing with you what we can possibly do i don't say that look i don't tell my daughter that look because i can't pay buy you a pair of shoes you are not my daughter i just try and sort it out that how it can be done in another way or i can see even sometimes throw my hands up sorry i could not get you that but the first thing the first message has to be that yes you are a part of this institute let us sit together and see what can be done instead of blaming the very state from which you are an integral part okay so stop blaming the by request is stop blaming the ugc okay you could have well blamed the ugc had not had you played the other account ledger book that you opened this non state business that you did you stop blaming the ugc and you start rather interacting with students and try to see how things can be sorted out i am the impression that i've got over my last 20 years unlike many other universities is that a very good thing about this students of this institute is that they have consistently displayed despite all difficulties a massive a huge and a total loyalty to this institute please respect that i demand from the institute that this loyalty this unconditional love for this institute by the students should be respected this is not the way to treat it you should not be on the streets this should have been sorted out long time back right so i am not going to buy the argument that there is no money and i am not going to buy the argument that the state is responsible for this no that's a patently problematic argument okay so congratulations now please see how you can get together and work it out coordinate with the other campuses what are their issues bring them together call them over to this campus sometime one or two of you go there interact so that they also get a feeling that yes you are basically a part of them and can and continue speaking to the administration to the institute until and unless they give you a clear signal that yes you are actually in reality a part of this institute that message should be received thank you शायद फंड कट का प्रॉब्लम है दीज आर द क्वेश्चन हमारे सबके दिमाग में थे